Tough questions must be faced. Questions like, where was God in the Holocaust? And why is our economy unraveling? Runners in life's race need to know that these kinds of questions can be faced and have been faced. Yet, there are mysteries we cannot fathom and may never fathom. Every generation needs to learn some key lessons anew. And today, it's our turn. Stay with us. From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Dr. Lutzer continues his series, God, Why Me?, as he brings a message from Job chapter 32 on words of wisdom from a young man. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the honor and the glory of God's name. And that's where everything is headed, and that's where we need to understand that God has an agenda that is being worked out, and we're a part of it. And even when he does what we think he shouldn't, God is still in control. I don't think that any Christian has ever lived for any period of time without somebody saying to him, well, what about the Holocaust? Or how can God allow somebody to plant a bomb that kills innocent children and to see them taken from the rubble of a building? Where is God when all that happens? Well, you know that the book of Job was written to deal with that question at least partially. There's much more that can be said about that problem than is recorded in the book of Job, but the book of Job looks at the problem through the narrow lens of the experience of one person, namely Job himself, who was a righteous man and yet who suffered very tragically, interestingly, because of his righteousness and not because of his unrighteousness. Now, I'm assuming in this message that you know something about what the part of the book of Job that leads us finally today to chapter 32, chapter 32, which is the story of this young man by the name of Elihu. And if you do not have in your mind some of the history of the book and some of the dialogue that has gone on before, you might want to catch up on that through uh, cassette tapes which are available to help us put all this together in one whole piece of cloth. But in Job chapter 32, we are introduced to a young man by the name of Elihu who is an interesting theologian. And in order to pick up the text, I want us to understand now that Job and his three friends have basically exhausted themselves having said everything that they knew about the problem. Job being condemned by his friends because they said, Job, you are being punished. You see, they had a view of God that says that if anybody endures tragedy, it is because he's being punished, and Job was being punished, and so they had to say that the reason was because you're a sinner, Job. And this young man has been listening into this conversation, and he can't take it anymore, and he's going to say something. And he says, many profound things. Chapter 34 is his, uh, chapter 32 rather, of the book of Job is his introduction to his message. You know, most messages have an introduction and uh, he goes on for a whole chapter before he gets down to the nitty gritty. Three things about the mood that he has as he speaks to Job. First of all, he is very angry. Over and over again, it says that Elihu's anger burned within him. Notice the last part of verse 2. His anger burned against Job because he justified himself before God. If we had time to read it, and remember, we're doing only a survey of the book of Job, we discover that Job did make some very self-righteous statements. In fact, Elihu is going to quote some of them back to Job. You know, when you're attacked... You and I have a tendency always to respond and to try to justify ourselves. Has anybody, incidentally, ever accused you of being defensive? That's one of the most difficult things that you can ever be accused of because the best way to respond is to say nothing. Because the moment you speak, somebody says, See, notice you are proving exactly what I've said about you. So if you're ever accused of being defensive, say nothing. But here's what happened to Job. As he was being criticized, he began to go through his life and think of all the righteous things that he did, and in his own mind he became more righteous and more righteous all the time. And he began to sin because he claimed so much righteousness. 
And young Elihu points that out. Not only that, but this young man is angry at his three friends. It says in verse 3, And his anger burned against his three friends because they had found no answer, and yet they had condemned Job. He's saying, Job, you're wrong because you're self-righteous, and yet these three friends are wrong because they are making unjust accusations about you, Job, because you are not as bad as they say that you are. They're just trying to fit you into their theology. And you'll notice, as we shall see, Elihu is going to take a middle path here and shed a little bit of interesting light on Job's predicament. So first of all, he's angry. He is also very hesitant to speak. In verses 6 and 7, it says, Elihu said, I am young in years and you are old. Therefore, I was shy and afraid to tell you what I think. I thought age should speak and increased years should teach wisdom. But it is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. And he goes on to say, just because you're old, that doesn't mean that you are wise. I want to say this to the young people that are here. If you are a young person, and I consider that to be anything under the age of 25, actually anything under the age of 65 seems younger and younger to me. But you know, young people have a great sense of uh, justice, and they spot hypocrisy. And you've got a hero in this young man who could see more than his elders could. So he is hesitant, but he's just filled with what he has to say, and he is just constrained. He's forced to say it. He reminds me of a garden hose when you try to put your thumb on the end of it, and finally you just get tired and say, I can't take it anymore, and you just let all the water come out. It says in 32, verse 18, I am full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. Behold, my belly is like unvented wine, like new wineskins. It is about to burst. Let me speak that I may get relief. I've got to say what I have to say. Well, that's the introduction. And now what is it that he is going to say? that is going to be very profound, even though it will be incomplete. Because remember, we're dealing with the Old Testament. He did not have the benefit of the New Testament revelation. First of all, he's going to say, Job, 